Dr. Dan. Welcome. Uh, every time I go to see this uh, session, I'm always reminded about the professor who once said to me, one of his students actually came up to him in the middle of class, actually, and said, you know, professor, if I only had one hour to live the rest of my whole life, I'd want to spend it with you in your class. And the professor th said, my goodness, and why might that be? And the student looked up and said, because it would seem like forever. So, in order to prevent you from having real long and boring presentations, what we're going to do today is provide you with a video to give you some principles and strategies so you can have effective presentations. And so what specifically we're going to do is we're going to cover how to plan, how to open, how to deliver, and how to close a presentation so you know what the components are when you go to do your technical presentation. And by all means, as you're um, watching this video, you know, have an open mind, you know, and reflect on yourself, your own skills. Feel free to take notes. And if there's a guidebook that's been provided for you, follow that along. So with that in mind, the end purpose will be to give you some good strategies so that you can be a more effective presenter when you're doing your, conducting your technical presentations. So with that in mind, let's hit it. The first thing I want to talk about is why do presentations fail in the first place? And I've jotted a couple of things up here. One is it's poor planning. Remember the expression, those who fail to plan, plan to fail? That's so fitting for presentations because quite often we didn't take the time and there's mistakes on handouts. You know, you, you selected the wrong media. You didn't assess your audience well. Another thing might be is poor delivery. And delivery is a skill thing. Now, have anybody interest in sports? For example, baseball. It, you can have someone who understands exactly how to hit a ball. They, they, they were taught the mechanics, where to put your foot, how to balance, you know, put weight where, and, but they may not still be hitting the ball or hitting home runs as well. So it's two things. You have the knowledge and you have the skill set. And delivery is much like that. You've got to have, know how to deliver and have good nonverbals, verbals, and answering questions. But you've got to develop those skills to prevent from having a monotone voice or having a lot of distractions that bother people. And the last part that often causes a presentation to fail is the closing. And the closing is critical. And using a sports analogy again, how many people have seen a tennis match where the person's players had several match points and ends up blowing the entire match? Or a ball team that's been up by several points and then they just can't close it out. And so the closing is very important because it's going to allow you to accomplish your objective in mind. So with that in mind, let's, let's take a look at some of the things you need to be concerned about then when you do your planning and organizing for your presentation. One of the first things you have to do is assess your audience. That means what's their knowledge level, what's the interest level, is what the language, is it technical, not so technical, who's the influential people there, what's your environment. And, I, and every time I think about this, I'm reminded about a time my consultant friend and I were given a presentation to this corporate uh, uh, company and uh, we were trying to solicit them to uh, engage our services. And we had it perfect. We had the presentation just went spectacular. We were in the front. We had the business looking people. We had some engineering looking people on the side. We had a little old lady in the back. We had like different variety of people in that group. And so we were really excited because when we got done, we said, this is a sure winner. And so then we looked up at the audience and said, well, would you like to engage our services? And then at that moment, what did everybody do? They all looked at, back at the little old lady in the back of the room. And she goes, nah, I think we can just do this stuff ourselves. And we go, oh, we blew it. Because we had spent all our time giving attention to the people with the suits on, and we, ne we neglected her. And I think she you know, knew that. And so know who your influential people are, and know that you can't you know, uh, omit anybody in that group. Another thing you have to do in planning is think about what type of presentation you want to do. What's the composition of the audience? What's the expectations and results? And you've got to figure out how do you want to organize this thing. Is it going to be organized more degree of acceptance? You start with the things that are first that you're likely to accept and move to the things you're least likely to accept. Chronological approach, historically, start from you know, the oldest, go to the front. Maybe analysis, synthesis. Analysis is tearing apart synthesis, putting it back together. Maybe it's topical, much like this presentation I'm doing now is topical. 
And it might very well be hierarchical, where we take a look at a corporate structure, start at the top, and work down from there. So think about how you want to plan and organize for this thing. With that in mind, not only do you want to plan and organize the content of the presentation, but you also have to decide what kind of media and handouts and so forth you're going to be using. That's very critical as well. And two things I believe that will dictate that. One is what is the environment, the audience in which you're actually doing this presentation. Are you on an oil rig out in the, in the Gulf Coast or are you in a corporate boardroom in, room with a, a large number of managers? That's going to dictate which one and, dis, and determine which media type you're going to use. Uh, you might use a large PowerPoint or Prezi presentation for a large group. In a little oil, oil platform, you might just bring some handouts or something more simplified. So the second thing that's real important that's going to determine what, what media you select will be, what do you feel comfortable with? What's natural to you? Some people are very comfortable using like power slides going through. Others don't like it. People fall asleep and it's too monotonous. So some like handouts, some like flip charts, like smart boards, some like traditional blackboards. So there's a host of things you have to decide. And so remember those two things. One, what's your environment? What would be best suited for that? And two, what's your natural uh, comfort zone? The other thing, last thing on preparing the media and handouts would be the handouts and written materials themselves. Um, if you're really nervous about doing a presentation and you don't like people's eyes on you, maybe the first thing you should do is distribute some handouts. So that way they'll focus on that and it gets it off you and get it more chance to uh, feel comfortable up here. If you're in a very, very large group, you can't be handing handouts, you know, one at a time because it's going to take too much time. So you package them together, collate them, staple them, put them all out at one time, and that way they can follow along with the page numbers as you address each one. If you have a smaller group, I advise you probably not to give them all at one time because they'll be busy reading all the material and it'll take your punch away and just distribute it as you go along. So hopefully those are some good points on um, preparing documents, how to use handouts, and maybe one last thing I'd like to mention is notes. What kind of notes should you have? You know, usually when you start a presentation, you start very, very large so or small. You start with a cue outline and you, just your topic areas you're going to cover. Then you go large with all the content and then you end up back with a short little outline that you use that you give your presentation. Um, I think never read. <laughs> don't read a script. Don't hide yourself behind podiums. Get out there, use your hands, be with your audience in, in a very natural way. And it's okay to have short notes. Maybe have short notes on a flip chart or so forth is fine. Uh, it's always good to have some notes. Some people don't have any at all because they're so confident in material. I would not advise that because you could just draw a blank. We've seen famous governors from states go draw blanks in presidential campaigns in the past and all different examples where you can just draw a blank and it's good to glance and have some notes that you could refer to. In fact, if there's any rock and rollers out there, there's a legend from years ago, one of the famous uh, uh, front men from the Beatles, John Lennon, it's rumored that when he gave one of his first uh, performances, he actually taped the, the, the words to the song on the back of his guitar. Now, did he need those notes? For, you know, probably not. Did it give him a little comfort? Probably so. And, and I think that's a good analogy. So, you know, have some notes and be prepared. Fair enough? So with that in mind, let's keep moving along. Uh, one of the important ones, and the one that probably faces a lot of people, because you heard in our introduction how terrifying sometimes it can be to give a presentation, and that's very high on the list of human beings. And that is the stress and nervous tension that comes from giving a presentation. Using another old rock and roll example, there's another legend front man from a famous band that, from, you know, that you've all heard from about, and that's the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger. And it was really interesting. One, one uh, evening I caught uh, an old uh, interview he was having. And they looked at him and, the, and he said, uh, uh, Mick, do you still, you've been doing this a long time, right? And he goes, yeah, a long time. He says, uh, 40 years or so, right? And he says, yeah. He says, let me ask you, do you still get nervous when you go out to do a performance? Or is that just kind of like come second nature? 
And Mick looked up and says, you better. <laughs> you better be nervous. You're going to blow that thing. And I just love the way he said it. So the point of that is, is that even if you're the top performers, top presenters, you better be a little nervous. And that's very natural. And it's how you use that nervousness to bring it in your presentation that will make the difference or not of whether it comes across as well. So what can you do? You know, don't dwell on it. Some strategies that you can do. Um, what I like to do, uh, besides being well prepared, is get a little quiet time. A little quiet time right before you come out, memorize your first line, that's the most important one. And just like those tennis players do, if you ever watch the pros, and I used to like to play tennis myself, and I found myself doing the same thing. You know, as you're kind of waiting to receive uh, or to serve, you're just kind of bending your strings back. It's kind of like called being, getting focused, getting in the zone. You bend your strings back. And you know, it's not necessarily done for a specific mechanical reasons, the way those tensions are probably strung on those professional you know, rackets, but it's more just kind of that, that it's just a routine. Some listen to headphones, music. Get in your routine that gives you quiet time or so that psychs you up to, to, you know, to uh, constructively put that energy where you need to be putting it. So use positive self-talk, you know, tell yourself you can do this well. And my last little point on nervousness um, is to think about, you know, internalizing versus externalizing the situation. Here's what I mean by that. Years ago, I once bought a stock. And some of you probably bought stock in their, you know, stock market. And I bought that stock at probably its high. <laughs> and it plummeted all the way down about the nothing. And I moaned and groaned forever on that. And, you know, I'm still moaning and groaning about it. And you just hate losing all that money and going down practically to nothing. And one day I was at a little neighborhood party and still complaining. And someone looked at me and he says, like you were the only one. <laughs> and the way he said that was just so hit home for me, snapped me out of it. Because like I was the only one. That stock was probably the most widely weld held corporate stock in America at one time. And everybody lost money on it. You're not the only one given a presentation either. You know, and most of the time you're given a presentation, you're in there with several other activities going for the day. You need to go in there and do a job and get out. And people are expecting just to see the presentation. So don't internalize or personalize it so much. Just look at it as if you're an airplane looking down. You're doing the job. You're going in, do the presentation, you get out. And if you look at it a little bit more mechanical, maybe it takes off a little bit of the you know, nervousness of it. Fair enough? So. If, the, if that sounds okay, the next thing I like to do is the most important thing in this entire presentation. And I remember, and this will almost bring a chuckle to some of you viewing right now, that when I was back in high school, I was in a geometry class, and I can still remember the teacher slamming his book down and looking out at us as a class and say, said to us, the next thing that you're going to learn is going to be the most important thing in your entire life. And I don't care if I see you in Alaska, and he said Alaska, I'm going to expect you to be able to tell me, geometry, the Pythagorean theorem. And he may have sound like God would strike us dead if we didn't learn anything, and I learned it too. And I could, if I were to see him, I'd still be able to tell it to him as well because I memorized it. He gave such a, an importance on that uh, uh, point. And this is our Pythagorean theorem right now. Our, the most important part of a presentation is the opening. The opening is the most important part, and why it goes wrong often is because people don't know what's supposed to be in there. And here are the things forevermore that you should know when you give a presentation, especially a technical presentation, you need to include all these elements. And the first thing you got to do is get attention. You got to capture everybody's attention. There's a lot of ways to do that. One way is to tell a story or a joke. Even in my opening video here, I told a little cutesy little joke. It ties in with what we're talking about. And you know, it makes maybe someone smile, or at least the attempt is there. And it could be risky under the wrong circumstances. But tell a little story, maybe tell a joke. You can simply ask for it. If I could have everybody's attention, I'd like to get started on this. Thank you for kindly being here. And then go on from there. You might use a little gimmick or create a visual um, you know, device. Uh, for example, you might say, did you all know that a dictionary has five million words in it? 
and so does this little microchip. And what I'm going to do today is explain how we can cram that much data in just a little chip like this. Boom, and then go right into your presentation. So you can use an analogy, you can use a, a little uh, a gimmick, you can use a statement of impact. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're sitting on a powder keg because our national debt is escalating. And by the way, it is escalating. It is really going through the ceiling and we need to get a hold of that. So, you know, some statement of impact that captures people's attention. And you can use the benefits, opportunities, start with a quotation. Different things get attention, but you've got to gain attention that ties into your presentation. Then the second thing you must do is arouse curiosity into what you're going to be talking about. Engage them, arouse their curiosity, and provide an overview of what's going to be done. I did that when I started out. So we're going to talk about how to plan, the opening, we're going to delivery, and the closing. So explain what's going to happen, give an overview, state the objectives of what you're going to do, and particularly is to establish goodwill. That means a good environment. And politicians are the best at this, let's face it. Establish goodwill. And goodwill means something as simple as this. Long day, folks. Hard week. Just a, a something that connects with people. You know, some presidential can, uh, politicians have done this a lot. Well, as a, f a former farmer myself, I understand your struggles. As a you know, former whatever, they're always someone that they are. So try to bond and connect with everybody. Um, allow maybe a uh, transition from somebody that went before you. Make a good transition. Allow for introductions, introducing everybody. You might give a background and a history of how, you know, this came about. And particularly what's important are the ground rules. You know, what can they or can't they do? And as I mentioned, I started out and the ground rules are straightforward. If, you know, take some notes, be open to these comments, bring, you know, follow your guidebook if you have one. And likewise in the presentation, you might mention, please hold all your questions to the very end and then I'll allow 10 minutes for, for discussion. Or you might say this informal session, you know, feel free to ask a question any time. Feel free to use the restroom if you need to go. Just make sure you come back. So add a little humor and explain the ground rules um, That's so they know what they are to do. Um, and otherwise, um, their roles and responsibilities and you'll do just fine. Fair enough? So that's the opening. So those are the components, elements you always need to know for the opening. And always remember those. So if you're nice and comfortable, let's keep moving along. Have you ever watched a presentation, someone given a, a technical presentation, and you're like, where are they at now? You're kind of confused as to what's the order and what's happening here. A lot of times because they have ineffective transitions. And a transition means this. It's a logical, smooth way of moving from one point to another so that everyone follows you. So you smoothly move from one point to another so that everyone can follow exactly where you're headed. And that's always important in a presentation because you're going to have several transitions. Every time you have a topic or a subtopic, you move then to the next one through a transition. Now, how do you do that? Here's how you do it. You might momentarily pause before you go on to the next topic. Another thing you may do is ask if there are any comments and questions before we move on. You might say, summarize what you just said. So in summary, on this section, we covered this, this, and this. So if there aren't any comments or questions, pause. What I'd like to do is move on to the next topic because this is how it relates to this. And maybe do that with your nonverbals. You might shift, you know, move to one point, move to another point. And so your nonverbals can help that transition or move to another media, different type. So remember transitions are extremely important in keeping people organized, following your presentation from one point to another. So if you, everybody's okay with transitions, if there aren't any comments or questions, pause, let's move on to our next thing, which is the actual delivery. In a presentation, as they say, tell them what you're going to tell them. <laughs> tell them, then tell them what you said. So tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, then tell them what you said. The opening was to tell them what you're going to tell them part. Now we're in the delivery. The delivery is where you actually tell the specific content. And when you're giving the delivery, there's some key things to keep in mind. Particularly is, will be your verbal, how you project your voice. 
And that's another skill thing. So you've got to get pretty good at projecting. Project as if there's four or 500 people out there. Be more animated. You know, express yourself and um, modulate your words. It, being more enthusiastic, articulate your words. And that's going to be helping you to be more dynamic so people will stay engaged as you, you know, give your delivery. And that's, that's a skill thing that you also have to just continue to work on. Besides your verbal, you've got to be good at answering questions. And especially if you're new at this, you, there's a tendency if there's a question posed, you tend to be more quick to want to answer it and you might cut the person off. So try to respect the entire audience when they ask a question, pause out of respect. That allows everybody to really understand the question. You might need to repeat the question. That's often done, especially if people can't hear. And then just a answer the question succinctly. And if they want to know more, they'll ask for more. And if you're really desperate and it's an informal session, sometimes you don't know the answer, you might try to say, well, what do others feel about that? And they have a dialogue, depending on what kind of presentation session that is. So remember, good verbal communications. Remember, answering questions effectively, which brings us to another part of the delivery, and that is not the body language. Body language or nonverbal techniques. Body language is huge when you give presentations. It's good to put some body language in it, but don't overdo it. Uh, to, just to let you, give you an example how important and powerful a body language can be, if everyone's nice and comfortable watching this video right now as I talk, go ahead and take your hand, and take your hand and put it on your cheek for a moment. I want to demonstrate something. So go ahead, be good sports, come on. Every, look around, put, go ahead, everybody do this. Put your hand, put it on your cheek here for a minute. minute. Ready? This is not your cheek, this is your chin. Your cheek's over here. This is your cheek. How many people actually just did what I did? <laughs> so it's natural for people to kind of do what people do versus what they say. And um, that's a very common kind of thing. So in, in uh, business and corporations, education and religion and all different aspects of, you know, of sectors of our uh, economy, um, Everyone's got to have good body language, good nonverbals. And if you are confident in something and you're saying we have a new policy here, and I really support that policy, I really like that policy. See, your nonverbals are not what we call congruent with your verbals. So if you support the policy, you know, be confident about it and have it be congru congruent, your nonverbals, with your verbals. And otherwise, you'll send mixed messages. So when you talk, give good eye contact. I usually give eye talk in clumps of people, like I go to the left, go more to the front, go back, go to the side. So you kind of go in sections to make sure that you have good eye contact because a lot of people tend to look down too much or not connecting with people out there and paying attention to the audience. And you can get a lot of information from the audience if they're engaged or not. I usually see the participants, those who are really engaged, have like green lights on their heads. They're, you know, leaning forward. You know, the yellow lights are starting to be lost and then the red lights are gone. So you can tell how much they're engaged just by paying attention to your audience as well. Should you pick it up, slow it down, you know, change the format. So that will give you good clues. Some last things on body language, when you're open to people, people tend to be open to you. You know, when you close yourself up, people tend to close, be defensive as well. People are not quite in doubt. I don't know about the cost of that thing. They scratch your head, and I may never know about the cost of that thing either. You know, they tighten up. So, you know, try to be casual, be more open, uh, balance a book on your head, look straight, confident. People who are in power often do what's called steepling. You know, they steeple. A little downcast and look down, you know, that's power. Often CEOs and presidents will steeple and they'll just kind of have that body language about them or do a soft steeple or subtle one, you know, you know, comfortable and relaxed. So to have good nonverbals. If you're expressing a point, try to do that. You know, on one hand, we've got this occurring in the economy. On the other hand, we have this occurring. So you can use your hands to express things and, and don't be over dramatic, but I think it's important to you know, have that congruence with your verbal and nonverbal. So if that made sense, in the delivery, be concerned with verbal communications, projecting your voice, modulating, articulating words, have a, answer questions effectively, and then lastly, as far as delivery goes, 
be concerned with your body language, how you, that your body language comes across and so forth. Okay, so that's the delivery. Now, as we were saying, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them and tell them what you said. Here's the tell them what you said part because this is now going to get you to towards the closing. And right before we do, though, we need to mention one quick thing. If you're in a presentation, you start having disruptive participants. And if you're in a position to do anything about that, here's a couple points for you. You know, often you have these side conversations taking place. Well, sometimes as you're talking, you can just, just pause for a moment. And then they might be alerted that, you know, they're talking. As you're talking, you might subtly just kind of walk over a little bit if you can to where the people are having a side conversation. So there's sometimes there's little tricks to be done. It's hard because depending on what's your situation. If you get someone who's a complaining a lot, you don't reinforce it. You might want to paraphrase, ignore the behavior, move on. Ask how others feel about that. Um, if you've got someone dominating a lot or a hostile person, you might say, good point. I look forward to talking to you more about this after the session. You know, so be diplomatic you know, as you go through this. The know-it-all is very similar as well. So learn skills about handling difficult people, and you can only do so much in the presentation as well, depending on what kind it is. But that is something to keep in mind. Fair enough? So with that in mind, as I was saying, that leads us to that closing part. And the closing now is critical. And how many times have you watched a presentation uh, and all of a sudden it's just like the person look, presenting just kind of looks up and kind of goes, uh, well, I don't know, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> you know, it's like just kind of abruptly ends. That's not good. And the closing, there's a whole process involved there. And it's not just abruptly ending. The closing objective is to momentarily capture everyone's attention so they can focus on exactly the purpose of your presentation and then generally make some solicitation for action. You know, if it's religion, to bring you know, to someone up to the front, join a congregation. If it may be politics, is to get your vote. If you're doing a technical presentation, engineering and technical uh, management type presentation. It might be to get acceptance from the management team to agree upon this new safety, this you know, uh, electrical uh, uh, problem or so forth. So um, it, whatever it might be is to get that attention. Now how do you do that? And one of the things you may want to do is simply summarize everything you've said. Okay, today our objective was to do this, this, and this, and then you summarize the strategies and so forth and that brings them you know, all to a common focus. You might restate the objective you had in the first place. Besides your objective, you might just simply ask for endorsement. I hope you all appreciated this presentation. If you feel comfortable with this, uh, I would appreciate you engaging our services. So you know, maybe just simply ask for it. And you know, don't talk too long, but actually uh, make that a bid. Uh, you might want to explain uh, what's the next step, where do we go from here, thank the participants. I uh, thank you kindly for uh, you know, um, observing my presentation. I tried my very, very best. And if there's no other comments or questions, just applaud enthusiastically and I'll be on my way. You know, just something that, that kind of wraps it up you know, is, is very, very important. So with that in mind, there you have it. We've talked about a lot of things today. We've talked about um, the um, planning, opening, delivery, closing. How do you go about what some, I gave you some strategies, some tips on actual what goes wrong, you know, and what you can do about it. How to prepare, how to prepare notes, how to prepare your media, how to select media. Remember, it's two things. One is what's your occasion environment. The second thing is what do you feel comfortable with. So selecting media, taking notes, that takes us into the actual opening, you know. And the opening is the most critical thing. And that, that opening, you need to have all those elements I talked about there and have them all in there so people know, you know, what's the objective, establish goodwill, allow for introductions, you know, state the ground rules, and kind of just, you know, have all those components in there because that's, those are the mechanics of what a good opening is. And we talked about you know, nervous tension, controlling that. Remember, it's a natural thing, and, and you'll do just fine with some practice and using the strategies we talked about. 
And then when we get into the deliver uh, transitions, you know, transition from the opening to the delivery, you know, how to do transitions, pause for a moment, explain what you just did. You know, if you're all nice and comfortable, there's no other comments or questions, now let's move to the next point. So transitions are important to keep a smooth um, point to point um, presentation. And then we get into our delivery. We talked a lot about verbal communications, nonverbal body language. We talked about answering questions. And those things are very, very important to you to have as well. And then we handle difficult participants. Give you a few tips on that, strategies you can use, because we're always going to face that. And you, there's some things you can do. And then you wrap up with tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, then tell them what you said, and then the tell them what you said part's the closing. And remember forevermore that you have to have a good closing. What's the purpose of closing? It's to round it all, get everyone's attention, focus exactly what your point's going to be, and then you do that through summary, through uh, solicitation for bid for action, um, thanking the participants, and you kind of round that out so that everything comes to a good closure. So with that in mind, we uh, guarantee you if you use these principles and strategies that we've outlined in this video today, that you'll be on the road for doing some effective technical presentations. My name's Dr. Dan, and I thank you kindly for watching this, and good luck to you in your life and your career.